very excited. You guys know that during the fall, I don't generally get a lot of time to bring guests on the program. And I had this opportunity where we were going to do this live program. Uh, more guys were going to be around, and I thought, I've got to get the bear on the show. So Chris Bear Felica, now live on the program, he joins the Joel Klatt Show. Bear, what's going on, man? Happy to happy to be here. Yes, it feels weird. It season went by so fast. The f the season did go go by fast. That's probably because we enjoy uh, waffles every Friday morning this is in true. Hampton. This is by very Hilton. true. Um, Bear is on Big Noon Kickoff, as you know, uh, and you've been such an amazing addition. By the way, I've uh, been so um, excited that you're with us now, um, and and obviously Bear Bets as well. You can find Bear Bets on on Fox Social. He and Jeff Schwartz break down all the gambling angles from around the sports world, so you can check that out. That's where I want to sit first, Let's do it. because conference championship game week is going to affect the playoff like we haven't seen in in recent vintage. I, there's been there's more scenarios than ever. Of, of who could be in the college football playoffs. So let's start with who do you like this week in these games, in the conference championship games, and then we'll talk about how that will affect the, the committee's decision. It's historic because you've got, what, the, the four undefeated Power 5 teams. that you, You've you never had that this this late in the year. It feels <clears throat> kind of like a Captain Obvious type week. Uh, in, in terms. And I am not one that normally lay, lay the points. I love the favorites. It's usually not what I am but it kind of feels that way in a majority of these games. Like the game tonight. You like the favorites. Uh, in, 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 in Vegas with, with Oregon and Washington, I know a lot of people came away, away from that first meeting between Oregon and Washington, even though Washington won. Uh, I think people felt a couple of fourth down decisions maybe go the other way. Uh, in Oregon wins that game, and Oregon kind of controlled most of the game. And you worry a little bit about, about Michael Penix. He hurt his ribs in those games. Yep. He hasn't yep. looked right since then. So I know that number got a little out of control, but I, I do think I the think Ducks... I think it's up to 10 now, It's up right? to 10 now. Wow. I, I, yeah, it, yeah, that's normal. I, I don't like chasing bad numbers, but I just have a lot of respect for Oregon. If you uh, talk to the, the Vegas odds makers out there, they have Oregon power rated as the second best team in the country behind that's Georgia, which surprised me that they, that they actually had them ahead of Michigan. That was very interesting to me. But I, I think there's so much on the line tonight. I think Oregon, not only Pac-12 title, college football playoff, maybe a potential Heisman for, uh, for Bo Nix as well, but I do like Duck tonight. Okay, so you said that you don't normally like chalk, right. but you kind of see and maybe can expect mm -hmm. chalk in this weekend game. If we have just all the favorites, and I've been doing this on the show all week, you know, trying to play out scenarios for the college football mm -hmm. playoff. So all the favorites win. That would be, just to, to recap for everyone, a Georgia win, a Michigan win, Florida State win, Oregon win, and a Texas right. win. Those would be your five wins this weekend. Who's your four then in the college football playoff? Uh, I, I think my opinion on this is different from a lot of people because I think obviously Georgia, Michigan, Oregon are in, and I think it's going to come down to that debate between Texas and Florida State. And if you look at the committee and the college football playoff and the way they lay out their criteria, it is there, right there. And, and Book Oregon has said it all, we, all year long. We are not here about the most deserved. We are here for the four best teams. Yeah. And it's in there as well. You've got the in, in, right, factors that will come into play, criteria, player availability. I don't know if using the logic of four best and player availability, how you can say Florida State right now with this team construction is one of the best four teams. It's, it's such a tough – Oh, man, because, listen, for my entire history covering this sport, I've always, even when they when they made the playoff, I didn't like the distinction for best versus using the distinction for most deserving. Right. Um, but that's what they did, right. right? And and listen, does Florida State deserve to go to the playoff if they win? Yeah, of of course, of course they deserve. Would they be one of the four best? No, I don't believe that that's the case. A couple of things on that. Number one is. A lot of people have have compared them to the 2014 Ohio State Buckeyes, who lost their quarterback late in the season, J.T. Barrett, and all of a sudden this this kind of unknown backup comes in, and we're mm -hmm. like, "Whoa, what's going on?" It's it's Cardell Jones. Now, here's what happened though in that year is that on this on the field right behind me, 59 nothing, they beat Wisconsin 59 to nothing, and proved that even with Cardell Jones. They were one of the four best teams. So they get included as the four seed. They go on to win the national championship. What I've been waiting for from Florida State is that type of performance mm -hmm. that even with Tate Rodemaker, you can show me, okay, I'm, we are still clearly one of the four best teams. This team only gained 224 yards of total offense against a 5-7 and seven Florida team last week. 
So those are the things that lead me to believe, like, listen, if we really wanted the best possible playoff, you would include Texas right. over Florida State. But, you know, again, that's that's something that – that's a hard discussion when you're talking it, about it, an undefeated it, it team. It is, and, and I've talked – and you being a former player, and I've talked to a lot of former players – who I do shows with, like, how would you feel about that as a player on a team oh. that was 13-0? and 0, But but it, but don't you have to judge them on the team that they are now? They had four, less than four yards of play, like you said last week. I mean, it's it's a hard deal, but you, or, I don't know. Last one I want to do, one, one more scenario, and this is the one that I that I think is the committee's nightmare. Okay, sir, so you ready? Mm -hmm. So Oh, yes. Okay, so four favorites plus Bama win. <laughs> Now it's like, so now you've got Oregon as a champ, Texas as a champ, FSU as a champ, Bama as a champ, Georgia as a one loss, Michigan as a champ. The only team I know for sure goes in that case is Michigan. Then I write down five teams for three spots, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I don't know what happens there, and I think that the committee might just quit. The, the, <laughs> I, th I think they, the, the, the crazy thing is that I don't know how in that scenario – you can take Alabama and not take Texas. There have been two teams this year that won a road game against a top 10 team. Texas at Alabama and Michigan at Penn State. Yep. So how do those two teams not get in? Like This is the scenario I think that you would need to worry about more if you're Florida State. Like I, you, I agree. If you throw Georgia as a one-loss team, two-time defending national championship team in that mix, that's where I think the committee might be like, are we really going to leave the two-time defending champion out who lost a close SEC title game? And, and by the way, you're not leaving the SEC champ out. They, ne they never have. So, so this is I, I, this is why it's so fascinating to me, Baron, and we're on the same page here, is that Alabama would get included because they would have beaten, right. you know, Georgia. And, mm -hmm. and rightly so, by the right. way. And, Absolutely. and I'm agreeing with that. But as soon as you include Alabama, you've got to include Texas. Well, there's two of the spots. And now you're sitting there with Oregon. Georgia, who Vegas thinks are the two best mm -hmm. teams in the country, and an undefeated Florida State for one spot. I, I mean, that again, the committee might just quit. It was just <laughs> like it, it would just all blow up, which would be incredible. Who would go? Who's your fourth in that? Is it Georgia? Do you take two SEC or you got Oregon? Oh, now I'm putting I think, you on the I spot. think they take Georgia. I think they take two SEC. I think SEC. That they would too. And it, it, well, that would be wild. And I, and I know that that's this is the scenario that I, uh, Jeff, talking with Jeff Schwartz, he, this is the one he's concerned about. He's yeah. absolutely concerned about Bama winning, Georgia, and then Georgia getting thrown in the mix with all those other teams. They, like it's, if we get an upset, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, that, that's for sure. I can't wait. Maybe uh, maybe we should all just root for that. But root for the root chaos. For chaos. Right? Root, root for the chaos. Okay, let's change uh, gears and talk a little bit about the Heisman Trophy. And again, like the playoff being so unsettled here uh, late, I don't know who I'm voting for for the Heisman Trophy. And by the way, if you do have a Heisman Trophy vote, don't vote until Correct. this weekend. Thank like, what you. are we doing? Like, Thank let the you. games play out. Right. I can't stand the people that send the vote on December first. The best. And I don't have a vote, so I mean, I'm I can't tell anybody. How is what. that? How does that happen? I've only been covering the sport for about thirty years. Yeah, why, why would right. I? Why would I get a vote? Right. <laughs> what, what What do I know? Oh man. Okay, but if you did have a vote, what's it coming down to? Well. As it says on the ballot, the most outstanding player in college football. That's a, the, the ambiguity of that is, like, is it stats? Is it team performance? Everyone has a different definition. I just – I don't know what we're doing if Jaden Daniels doesn't win the Heisman Trophy. I mean, his numbers suggest that, that he has played the best of anybody in the country. He's averaging more yards per game than 80 teams in the country. He's accounted for more touchdowns. You're telling than me he averages more than Iowa? Yeah, by a couple hundred yards a game. <laughs> believe it or not, yeah, and I know it's hard true. to believe. That's true. Um, and, we're, and we're not having this conversation. If, if neighbors catches that ball in the end against Ole Miss that went off his fingers, we're not having this conversation. Right? He, a ten and two LSU, I think, will be viewed differently than a nine and three LSU. And, and I think that's the whole most outstanding part of it. Where I think there is a large majority of voters that will see Bo Nix if they win the Pac-12. At 12 and 1, they go to the college football playoff. I think that comes into the outstanding yeah. thing. And what, what I dislike about this process so much at times is where if me, who is championing Jaden Daniels because of the historic year that he's had, it's you're being viewed as, oh, you think Bo Nix stinks and he doesn't deserve it. No. If Bo Nix wins, he's a more great than candidate. deserving winner yeah. and, and a, great, a great player, and he deserves it. I just happen to think under the, my criteria of most outstanding that Daniels has had a better year. So, I. Um, this is not an official criteria. 
I do have a vote, and I've, I've, I've always felt like if you're going to win the Heisman Trophy, first of all, it is the most prestigious mm-hmm. individual sporting award in American sports. It's it's better than being the Super Bowl MVP. It's better be, than being the NFL MVP. It's better than being the NBA MVP. It's it's the Heisman Trophy means so much, and and so I I do take it very seriously. If you're going to win that award, you can you cannot have lost your three most toughest games. Like that's a, that's a yep, tough one for me, in, in particular as a quarterback. Now, I don't know exactly how I'm going to vote because I don't know how that game on Friday night is going to come out between Michael Penix and, and Bo Nix. But that's a tough one for, for Jaden Daniels because you can put together a lot of numbers, and, and, and I can tell you, he hasn't played a meaningful game in a month. Correct. You know, and, and Bo Nix has been every pass, every single rep that he's taken for the better course of the entire season, and in particular in the last month, there has been the utmost of stress on. And, and, Every single outcome of every play of Bo Nix's had his his team's entire season on it. Whereas for the last month, LSU, this is all they've been playing for. They, you know, since they lost to Bama, they've had no chance to get nope. into a postseason game. So their entire season is just about the numbers for Jaden Daniels. I know it sounds like I'm trying to make an argument against him. He's unbelievable. I love him as a player, really do. But when it comes to this this award, there, there to me there needs to be some level of excellence in your team's toughest games. When when it's required most, you play your best. And and I'm not saying that he didn't, but that's certainly going to be on my mind in particular as we watch here on Friday. And night, that's the, that and that's the amazing game. thing. Like even in the games that they lost, he had unbelievable games. He got knocked out by that hit by Dallas Turner in the yeah. Alabama game and. Uh, the defense was just so bad. It's funny. But I'm thinking here as you're saying that about playing pressure-filled games, and I think back to a couple of years ago, uh, the, the baseball, the American League MVP race, where Shohei Otani was unbelievable, but the Angels were completely out of it, and Aaron Judge is hitting 60-something home runs in pressure-filled games to try and get the Yankees to both season, and people were making the same argument. Like, how can you give Otani the MVP this year when Judge is doing this in a pressure-filled stage? So it, it's kind of it's kind of strange how it, it all comes like, you, you, and that's, but that's why I'm saying everyone has a different opinion that's of right. what goes into outstanding. It's great, though. You, you hit on it earlier. I, I was thinking it's like the first time probably since Derrick Henry and McCaffrey in 15 that we actually have legitimate drama yes. as to what's going to happen next time. What, what I'm hoping um, – in that year, this is just a little bit of a rant. There was a lot of voters. It's your show. You're allowed to rant. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. A lot of voters that year, the Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey year, and I hate to say it, but they, they may have been, you know, situated in a certain part of the country, left McCaffrey off their ballot. Which is ridiculous. And 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 because of that, McCaffrey ended up losing the Heisman Trophy. Whereas, you know, listen, if you wanted to vote Derrick Henry, great. Absolutely. He's a phenomenal yep. player. But there was no way that Christian McCaffrey wouldn't have been number two on your ballot. Right. But because a lot of voters kind of actively sabotaged McCaffrey and left him off of the ballot, then he didn't get enough points to end up winning the trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, I could sense that maybe happening in, in this year because of, of Jaden Daniels. That's but then so here's the, the weird part. Jaden Daniels started his career at yes. ASU, and Bo Nix started his yep. career at Auburn. So now all of a sudden it's like the Southern kid grew up in Alabama, is playing for <laughs> Oregon, and Jaden Daniels is now at yeah, LSU. You're the that, only kid that, that, now at LSU, yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, man, I I appreciate you coming on today. Of course. And uh, just uh, on a side note, I, you have added so much to our coverage of college football at Fox Sports. You've made us better. You've appreciate made big, big Noon Kickoff better. Um, and so I appreciate it's, you. It's been, it's been so much fun for me. You worry a little bit when you, after being in one place for such a long time, you come to a new spot. But everybody here has been unbelievable. It was a really good guy. And every now and then you, you need a little bit of like a kickstart, maybe a change. And it's been every everything that's happened since I made the decision last year to make the move over to, to Fox and Big Noon and the soccer. And it's been reaffirming that I absolutely made the right choice. So it's been great. I appreciate you, bud. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, appreciate thank it. you. Thank you. Chris Bear Felica, you can check him out uh, on Big Noon Kickoff as well as Bear Bets with Jeff Schwartz. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you liked this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.